Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe. This is Animal Radio. I am so glad that I came back this week. We have actress Glenn Close. She'll be joining us. You're really doing a good job, Judy, booking these guests. I, I can't believe I got her. Th- also, your pet horror stories throughout the show, throughout the week. one 866 405 8405 ABC's Good Morning America, Dr. Marty Becker. He's clearing up the confusion on microchips today on Animal Radio. And NBC's Days of Our Lives, Brian DeTilo joins us. What's up with Ellen DeGeneres? She said, if I don't get the dog back by 2 o'clock, I'm calling the media on you. I'm calling my attorneys. I'm calling the police. Details on the way right here. But first, 1-866-405-8405 for your horror stories, big time prizes. And we're actually emptying out the, uh, the prize closet so we can make room for all the holiday gifts that we need to put in there. Hi, who is this? Hi, this is Pam. I live in Lubbock, Texas. How are you? Very good. Lubbock, Texas. What's the weather like today? It's very nice. It's in the 80s. In the 80s. A little oh, bit warm there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> You're listening on KJDL 1420, I assume. Yes, I am. Okay. Do you have a horror story for us? Yes, I do, but that, it does have a happy ending. Uh, that's what Good. I wanted to make sure, because we've, <laughs> we've heard a few stories that have had some bad endings. I don't want to hear any more bad endings, so I want to no. hear some happy endings. Uh, Pam, go ahead. Okay, my husband and I, we love to walk through old cemeteries, because you can learn a lot of history that way, and it's just kind of nice to reflect. And we were going to a cemetery in Arlington, which is uh, outside of Dallas, and we saw three little kittens. And they kind of followed us around the cemetery, and it was obvious that they were skinny and in and, and need of some care. Mm. And uh, so we were about to leave the cemetery, and there was this one little kitten that just ran for his life. And we turned around, and I was already crying because I hate to see strays. Uh-huh. And he was panting and just, you could tell he was so tired and thirsty. And so my husband comes over and he picks up two of them and he goes, pick up that third one. So we picked him up and understand we already had six dogs. Uh-oh. <laughs> we picked the kittens up and we took them home and they were starving. They were skin and bones. They weighed two and three pounds a piece. Oh. Yeah. And we took them to that, got their shots. And they were fine. They were in decent health and no problems. We took them home and put them in the garage where we had a little cage. We had a female that had just had a female stray dog that had just had puppies and they were out, grown and out of the cage. Uh-huh. So we put them in there. And during the day, because it was very hot, we'd put them in our bedroom and they'd, they gained weight and they ate like little pigs and they were very tame and we'd go in the bedroom and they'd hear us coming and You'd see them come out from underneath the bed and behind the chest, and they were just so friendly. And so I gave them about two weeks to gain some weight, and then I put them on a, a website. I don't know. Do you want me to say the name? Well, sure. Okay. I put, on, put them on Craigslist. Okay. And within a day, I had all three kittens taken. Wow. Yeah, and, amazing. yeah, it was wonderful. And then about, oh... Two months later, I got an email from one of the ladies that had taken the kitten, one of the kittens, and she, her father was a professional photographer, and there were professional pictures of this beautiful gray cat and its owners, and it was just so heart-rendering to see that we had done something that had made these people so happy and had given that kitten a good home. It was just oh. wonderful. Wow. That, 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 that's good. And you see, I'm getting the uh, goosebumps. The yes, goosebumps his hair up stands up on his arm. Yeah, when I hear oh, stories like it that. It was great. And this girl was almost afraid to hold the kitten the first time they came to pick it up, but obviously she grew to love it. <laughs> these are little cemetery kitties. How cute. No, oh, yeah. We had given them our own personal names, of course, like Lurch and uh, <laughs> and what's the woman's name in the Munsters? <laughs> uh, 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 Not Elvira. No. Uh, Letitia? Letitia. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah, and Herman. We had given them those names, so. <laughs> so you didn't keep any of them? No, we couldn't. We had six dogs, all of which were strays when we got them, so we couldn't keep them. <laughs> so what do you have now? What kind of animals do you have now? I have seven dogs. Wow. I ha- oh, yeah, and they were all strays. And uh, my most recent was a purebred German short hair pointer that we found running loose on the road. And uh, I saw her running loose on, we live kind of out in the country. 
And I saw her running loose, and I was afraid she was going to get onto the highway. So I stopped the car, and here she come around. My husband opened the door, and she hopped right in. <laughs> <laughs> and she was uh, she was also starving. You could see her hip bones and her shoulder blades, and we're the kind that we just we try to think about just getting them healthy and giving them away, but. We couldn't do it. So that's how we've ended up with seven strays. <laughs> do you uh, take them trick-or-treating at all? Dress them up? Do costumes? Uh, no. No. We don't do anything like that with them. We just kind of, they're just kind of house dogs and just, we just love them like our kids. And no, they're just kind of protected and they have their friends there, so. <laughs> and they give you that unconditional love. You know what? Let's put together a big old package for them. What are their, what are all their names? Okay. We have Slick. He's a Dolby Lab mixer. I have Susie. She's a Rottweiler. I have Maxine. She's a German short hair pointer. I have Brandy. She's a, we believe she's a Catahoula. Uh, they come from, they come from Carolina. I, 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 <laughs> I've never heard of that. Yeah, she's a Catahoula. She's a leopard dog. She's got leopard stripes. Huh. Black, black and brown leopard stripes on her. We're going to have to look that one up. Yes. Yeah, she's beautiful. Uh -huh. And I've got Ginger, who was a pregnant stray who had Singe and Fuji. Fuji? Fuji, like the blip, because when she was little, it was like she didn't have any bones. She'd lay down and she'd just spread out. <laughs> well, we'll put together a Slick Susie, Maxine, Brandy, Ginger, Fuji package uh, <laughs> with all the stuff in the closet that we need to clear out. It's, it's some good stuff in there. Lots stuff that you brought home from Super Zoo, Judy. Toys. And we thank all you right. so much for rescuing these animals. Oh, well, thank you for having this program. It's wonderful. You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at AnimalRadio.com. Log on. Learn more. The Animal Minute is brought to you by Urinoff, the number one vet-recommended urine odor and stain remover. To purchase, visit www.urinoff.com. Urinoff, finally, something that works. Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. A Canadian man now has to pick up his mail at the post office. Canada's postal system has stopped delivering his mail after a carrier was scared away from his door by what she described as a very threatening cat. John Samborski says his eight-year-old declawed black cat named Shadow is gentle and calls the whole situation ridiculous. He told the local paper that Shadow likes to eat, sleep, and cuddle. You could drop a bomb on him and he'd just open one eye, take a look, then close them and go back to sleep. A Canada Post spokeswoman said she hoped for an amicable solution to its dispute with the cat owner, but also added that the carrier who delivered the mail to the house was brought up on a farm and very comfortable with all animals, just not this cat. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. Glenn Close on the way. There's lots of reasons to need a urine odor and stain remover. Your dog's afraid of thunderstorms. Cat hates being alone. You've moved into a new house. But there's only one reason to buy urine off because it actually works. Urine off's high performance formula gets to the source of the problem and removes it permanently. Even cat urine. Many odor removers claim to work, but thousands of loyal urine off customers, even vets, swear by it. If urine odor is a problem in your home, reach for urine off, the odor remover that actually works. Available exclusively at www.urinoff.com or your local vet. Hi, I'm Vanna White, and I invite you to help solve the puzzle of saving animals' lives. Come on out Sunday, October 28th to the annual Race for the Rescues 5K Run, Walk, and Pet Adoption event at the Pasadena Rose Bowl. Proceeds benefit eight nonprofit dog and cat rescue groups. Go to racefortherescues.org to sign up and make your tax-deductible donation. Make adoption your first option. Racefortherescues.org. Hi, this is Hal from Animal Radio. Come join us as we broadcast live from the Race for the Rescues. Buddy, don't do that. Don't worry. Lots of dogs eat grass. Didn't you hear? Dogs can get worm infections from eggs and larvae in the grass. Those parasites can even infect humans. I know. That's why I give my dog Safeguard K9 Dewormer twice a year. It's a safe and easy way to eliminate and prevent the major intestinal worms that infect dogs and to protect my family against infection. Where can I find out more? Just visit www.safeguard.com. That's S-A-F-E hyphen G-U-A-R-D dot com. 
Every year, there are millions of pets in animal shelters across the country just waiting for a loving home. I'm Mike Farrell with a very simple message. If you're thinking of getting a pet, please adopt. To easily locate your closest place to adopt, call Pets 911 toll-free at 1-888-PETS-911. It's easy, it's free, and it gives a pet a second chance at life. Together, we can ensure a better future for our pets. For adoptable pet listings in your community, go to Pets911.com. Pets911, proud to be partnered with Animal Radio. Hey! You want to keep a secret from your dog? It's the new fish sticks from Canine Caviar. They're good for your dog's teeth, gums, and also his achy joints. And fish sticks from Canine Caviar are 100% natural, completely digestible, and contain no chemical preservatives, additives, or fillers, and they're low in calories. But don't tell your dog that. All they care about is that they taste good. Get your dog fish sticks at CanineCaviar.com. That's www.CanineCaviar.com. Hey, you know anyone who has owned a pet can tell you nothing is more frustrating than their pet soiling in the house. Often they do this in one spot over and over and over again. There is a reason why your pets do this. Pets are attracted to their own unique body scent, which is known as their pheromone. And that pheromone is always left behind in every soiling. Therefore, it's natural for your pet to follow his keen sense of smell and go back to it. So the question is, how do we get the pheromone out so our pet stops? Resoiling in the house. Well, the good news is there's finally an answer. It's Get Serious Stain, Odor, and Pheromone Extractor. Get Serious is the only stain and odor remover with the ability to remove your pet's pheromone while also getting out the urine odor and any stain. Stop blaming your pets for resoiling when you used a cleaner that didn't get the pheromone out. And don't spend another minute cleaning up unnecessary repeat accidents. Pick up Get Serious today at PetSmart or visit PetSmart.com. PetGadgets.com. If you're looking for innovative and high-tech pet products, PetGadgets.com. Unique and high-tech products that you won't find at your local pet store. PetGadgets.com. Find the latest products that will make life easier for you and your pet. PetGadgets.com. Everything from massage beds to a remote-controlled tennis ball launcher. PetGadgets.com. Be top dog in your neighborhood. Shop at PetGadgets.com. Hey, this is Sean Hayes on Animal Radio. Remember to spay and neuter your pets. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness. From all across the globe, this is Animal Radio. We are moments away from actress Glenn Close sharing her love and bond with her animals and her new ventures. You know, she gets kind of a bad rap, Judy. Yeah, she's played some unsavory characters in the, her past movies. Fatal Attraction, of course, with the bunny in that. The program that she's doing now, Damages. Damages, yeah. I'm going to question her about that. That's all coming up with Glenn Close in just a few minutes. Right now, from ABC's Good Morning America, our friend, resident vet, Dr. Marty Becker joining us. Doc, how are you doing? I always love being on your show. Well, now let's see. Uh, you're up in Idaho. you got to be getting ready for Halloween. It must be very, very beautiful around Halloween there. The animals, do you dress them up? I love Halloween. Well, we have Halloween, yes, sir. We we actually do. We have uh, we have two dogs and five cats and assorted horses up here. But we we do dress the one dog up. But he he wears all sorts of outfits. Um, we we do a thing at our local little school where we go down and we, we're candy man and treat lady, and he's sugar doggy. And he, he was a lion last week, and we had him do his little. It's supposed to be a roar, but it was more like a howl. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog is it? He's he's well. We thought he was a Papillon Poodle Yorkie cross, and we had him genetics tested and found out he was a Pomeranian Chihuahua Yorkie cross. He's about thirteen pounds. Uh, God, it's so funny. I, I love to hear my wife talk to him because she has this loving voice that's like, "Oh, you, my little man. Mama loves my little man." And I said, "Someday, would you just talk to me exactly the same way?" <laughs> And instead of saying Cody, just insert Marty everywhere when you say Cody. Oh, my God. Hey, one thing interesting about Halloween, though, that is the second most common time per year that pets are lost. Really? Uh, Fourth of July is number one. Uh-huh. And you know why that is. Uh, you know, the loud noises and the dogs that will run through a plate glass window to get away from that. Yeah. And it is the second busiest time for veterinary emergency clinics. 
I would imagine there's so many things that can really freak our animals out, and especially putting them in costumes. If they're if they're used to that, they like it. I imagine it's okay. But for some animals, we don't want to subject them to our holidays. It's everything. You know, think of how few times your front door is opened anymore. So your yes. front door is opened up, and the dog bolts out and 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 gets into some kind of accident. Of course. Uh, consumptions of, of chocolate and other things, the foil wrappers, the cat's tail goes over a lit candle. Mm. Uh, there's and, and again, those costumes, that something that is not accustomed to it, uh, ours is, but the ones that aren't accustomed to it, that can't see, it tightly restricts them. Um, you just need to be really cautious. You know, if you have a kind of pet that's anxious, you need to put them in a safe room or even think about boarding them over Halloween. Uh, you might also talk to your veterinarian about something you know, one of the, the Valium kind of compounds that, that sedates them, that gets rid of that that anxiety. Um, uh, you know, the most important thing is to have ID on them, uh, some kind of identification if they do bolt out the front door yeah. or take off, especially a microchip, which I have always said, I think all of us here at Animal Radio have said, is one of the most important identification that you must have for your animals. i got to say, though, there's been a little bit of question about the microchip recently you've heard about all the hubbub haven't you well you know uh, being a veterinary medical communicator i i'm a practicing veterinarian too so i'm getting these questions in the exam room i'm getting these questions in my syndicated column and and we're going to be covering this on network tv as well uh let me answer this directly first people have misconceptions about what a microchip is a microchip is this little tiny computer chip about the size of a grain of rice that's programmed with a specific identification number and this chip is enclosed in this biocompatible glass, and it's small enough to fit into a hypodermic needle. So you actually inject it just like you do a vaccine. And once it's injected with the chip, it can be identified throughout its life with this one-of-a-kind number. Now, there was a bunch of stuff. There was a UPS story about pet microchips causing cancer, and it kind of got traction because the FDA had just approved microchips for use in people with Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. So people are thinking, oh, oh wow. people are going to get microchips. Oh, my gosh, it's causing uh cancer in animals. Listen to this. There's been 14 million plus microchips used and there were only four cases in question. And when they went back and looked at this, the research was done on mice that were prone to cancer. So, you know, the report, the research was actually flawed. And when the veterinary community looked at this, that there couldn't even be a clinical study to investigate the cancer even possibly caused by these microchips. It's, oh, it's a myth. It's a myth. It's, it's a, a plain lie. They don't cause cancer. Right. 8,000. Now, listen to this. 8,000 pets per month are returned to their owners in the U.S. thanks to microchips. So, per month? Per month. So, you know, microchips are a necessity in today's society, and they benefit pets and owners and animals and communities alike. And What about the news we've been hearing, oh, this frequency isn't read on some scanners, and new ones are being put in that don't read on other scanners? What are we to think of that? Well, here, here's one of the things. The worst thing you want to do is think you have permanent identification, then have it slip through the cracks. You know, th these microchips are permanent. They can't be lost, altered, or destroyed. Uh, it works. What happens when they do this scanner, it sends a radio signal to the chip to read the identification number. You know, the pet doesn't feel anything when the scanner's placed over it, and it shows this certain number on it. And then the, the person reading the scanner can contact the National Registry to find out who the pet belongs to. There is a, still kind of a scuffle going on between different companies about, you know, can these microchips be read by all scanners? and one of them that I actually use for my own dog, and the one that I recommend is called Rescue. It's R-E-S-Q, and it uses an ISO chip. ISO stands for International Organization for Standardization. So anywhere in the world uh, that this ISO chip can be read. And the one thing I like about this Rescue chip, too, is it's a true no-cost pet registration database. So once you, you buy the chip, it's granted free registration for the lifetime of the pet, including free updates. And the other good thing is that Rescue Scanner uh, reads all brands of microchips tested. Oh, okay. So you won't have any of these stories where an animal was euthanized because they thought it didn't have a chip. That exactly right. See, that'd be the world's worst thing to think that. Well, there's two problems you run into with microchips. It's people that you know some of these require a subscription database, and the people don't pay for them, or they forget to update it. So then the pet is lost found but the owner can't be contacted mm -hmm. or to have it go in and have have people think well there's no microchip there when in fact it had one it just couldn't be read by the scanner so 
you know, the rescue scanner can read all brands of microchips. It has a no-cost pet registration, which I like, because once you, you, you buy it one time and you're done, and you can update it for lifetime. If you have an animal, like we have animals here at the studio that were registered many, many years ago, and we've since moved from location to another location, people need to update their uh, information with the uh, companies. I guess we haven't done that Guilty. here at Animal Radio. I would think that there are probably a lot. Hey, are we reminding you right now? You're sitting at home going, geez, I put a microchip in my uh, chihuahua about 10 years ago, but I've moved seven times. It's, it's kind of useless with the information that's in there, right? Well, that's, that's a perfect thing right there is... You know, in the, in the United Kingdom, for example, they util, utilize an ISO-compliant chip, and 47% of lost dogs are reunited with their owners. Wow. That's a lot higher than the U.S. Now, in the mm -hmm. U.S., about one out of three pets is going to be lost sometime in their lifetime. So it's not a matter of if it's going to get lost. It's, it's when it's going to get lost. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to get them microchipped. It's really important that... Uh, you know, that you keep the thing updated, and that, that's what I like about the one that has no cost to it. So there's no barrier for you going in and updating it and making sure that it stays current. Okay, so head into your vet and ask for the rescue chip if you're getting your animals chipped. Now, if they're already chipped, do we need to rechip them? No, right? Because the the new readers the new readers will read all the chips. Okay. Now, I actually waited for a while to to wait for this chip because I wanted the international standard and I wanted the reader that would read all the chips. So I actually kind of waited. My, my daughter has two little pug puppies, and we waited for them. These chips last forever. They have no power supply. There's no battery. There's no moving parts. It lasts for a lifetime. If you want more information about that chip, you can go to bear.com. It's like bear aspirin, B-A-Y-E-R-D-V-M.com, and you can find out more information about the rescue chip. And, of course, it won't be long before Google has a chip in each and every one of us. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Marty Becker, the website, petconnection.com. And we'll see you on ABC Good Morning America and, of course, right here on Animal Radio for more Becker Briefs. You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at AnimalRadio.com. Log on. Learn more. Frankly, I'm a little embarrassed that... Uh, Why? We, well, we have America's number one most listened to pet talk program and mm -hmm. our, our microchips aren't up to date. I know. I can't believe that. Uh, of all people, we should be on top of something like that. Now, we're going to take a little break in just a couple of minutes here. And during that, Judy's going to get on the phone with uh, our microchip company <laughs> and update those microchips at the studio, Cats. Glenn Close, actress Glenn Close, is going to be on the show today, just a few minutes away. What show did you tell her she was going to be on? Oprah? Oprah. That's what I always use because you tell them Oprah and they want they to come do. on. They're very anxious. Okay. Also, uh, has Ellen flipped out? Hmm, I think so. All the details on the way, as well as NBC's Days of Our Lives, Brian Dottillo. He plays Lucas on Days of Our Lives. You know he's had that gig for 15 years, the same show? yes. We're going to ask him what his secret is. Coming up next, right here on Animal Radio. Don't go anywhere. This is Jane Lynch on Animal Radio. Please spay and neuter your animal. Spay or neuter. Let me say that again. You don't want to do both. Spay or neuter. Let me say it again. Can I do that? You can do whatever you want. Oh, God bless. I'm going to try it one more time. Hi, this is Jane Lynch on Animal Radio. Please spay or neuter your animal. I love it. You do so good early in the morning. I, I, my I'm so caffeinated work. right now, can I tell you? I'm yeah. barely holding it together. Well, you're awesome. Now let's go to the phones for a very important call. Hi, I'm Kenny Loggins. And if you're like me, saving animals is music to your ears. Come to Race for the Rescue's Run or Walk and Pet Adoption event. All proceeds benefit eight nonprofit dog and cat rescue groups. Make adoption your first stop. Race for the Rescue's on Sunday, October 28th at the Pasadena Rose Bowl. Go to raceforthrescues.org to sign up and to make your tax-deductible donation. Hi, this is Hal from Animal Radio. Come join us as we broadcast live from the Race for the Rescue's. Hey, hey, this is Davy Jones here on Animal Radio. Just want to say look after those animals because they look after you. Have a great time. See you soon. Bye. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness. From all across the globe, this is Animal Radio. Everybody is a pet lover, even Glenn Close. And she is on... Line two. Well, hi, Glenn. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, thank you. Did we catch you at work? No, I'm back from work. I worked earlier today. You've got a grueling schedule, I understand, working on damages, right? Yeah, fun, though. 
Well, I welcome you to Animal Radio, and there's one thing I want to clear up first for all the listeners. Um, you've played some roles. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Well, okay, let's let's just, I want to list off what I remember. Uh, of course, 101 Dalmatians, you terrorized puppies. Yes. Fatal Attraction, there was the bunny incident. And then uh, in this, in Damages, didn't you have a dog killed in the, the pilot episode? That's what's inferred. Okay. <laughs> I kind of am in denial about that. Glenn, how could you? Oh, yes, I know. But we know different. You're, you're very much the uh, animal lover, aren't yes, you? Yes, in fact, I'm feeding Bill and Jake as we speak. <laughs> Tell us about Bill and Jake. <laughs> oh, Bill and Jake are adorable. There's a woman called Elaine Sober, Sober who lives in McAllister, Montana, who for a number of years has um, bred this wonderful combination of terrier mixes. Mm. And um, my family's had a lot of them. Uh-huh. So Bill and Jake are Montana terrier mutts. <laughs> Montana terrier mutts, okay. How old and are they, they? they go with me everywhere. Jakey's eight. He's actually my daughter's dog. And uh, Bill is six. So they go with you to uh, on the set and everything? Yeah, they do. Oh, how fun. They're, they're the uh, mascots of Steiner Studio. I have a nice room where they can stay, or I love to bring them down to the set if it's not, you know, if it's conducive. And we tape their little jingly collars so that uh, they won't disturb the sound. And they <laughs> everybody just loves it when Billy and Jake come. They don't ruin a take or anything, huh? No, I mean, I've had two of my other dogs in movies with me, and they're so sensitive to, you know, to my every move and voice that they're, it's, they act as if they're their highly, highly trained dog. So in some ways, I wish that Jakey had been my dog in the movie, but I don't think, I don't know if he, I don't think he could have been taught to bark. And stuff like that. <laughs> have they ever tried to sneak on the set during the filming and actually be part of the show? No, that no. would that would never happen. <laughs> it would be hard, hard for them to get past all the people that would you know, waylay them before they got to the set. When I was a teenager, I had an epiphany with an animal. Uh, there was I learned that animals were sentient beings. I connected with my first animal. Did that ever happen to you? Do you have a childhood animal that sort of changed the way you thought about animals? I have been surrounded by, by animals my entire life, so they've informed me from, you know, from when I can remember. So I've never had a life without animals, especially dogs. My first dog uh, was a collie, and uh, we, we lived on a wonderful piece of property in Connecticut, but it had a very long, straight road along one edge, and so a lot of our dogs, unfortunately, died on that road because mm. people would speed. Mm-hmm. Um, and with a farm, you know, so it was kind of hard to keep track of them all the time. And we didn't have, they didn't have the now the invisible fences and all that. Mm-hmm. So my, my first dog, you know, met his fate on Round Hill Road. Um, I, and I wore his belt. I mean, I wore his collar as a belt. That's how little I was. Aww. And I have a huge memory of him. He was a wonderful tricolor collie. Mm-hmm. And uh, we grew up with collies. And then my dad was in medical school, and he would rescue dogs from the lab. That, they, that probably they'd found on the oh, New, York, wow. New York streets. And so we had not only collies, but um, a great motley assortment of New York street dogs. So, um, and then I had a dog all through college. I've, I, you know, I've always had a dog. You're a dog person? I'm very much a dog person, though I also have two cats. <laughs> yeah, they're, pro- they're probably spoiled just as much as the dogs. I wouldn't say my dogs are spoiled. My dogs are extremely well-mannered. So um, they're, I guess they're spoiled in that I try to include them in as much as my life as possible. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, dogs love to be included. Definitely. <laughs> they, they kind of expect to go wherever I go and, and always this terrible look when they realize that they can't. Um, but they're very much uh, part of our life. I understand that your husband, uh, he makes diagnostic tools for veterinarians? He founded IDEX. IDEX, okay. Yes. I've heard of that. He founded that from scratch. I was my husband, and it was just inducted into the Biotech Hall of Fame, actually, just a couple of days ago. You have a lot of animal diagnostics. Isn't he uh, heading a, a new venture, Fetch Dog? I want yeah, to hear about this. Yeah, FetchDog.com. What is this mm-hmm. about? It's it's a site, a website for dog owners, and it's going to be everything. It will be commercial. It will be community. 
it will be um, you know a lot of wonderful content, a lot of articles and research you can access. Um, I have a tiny, tiny part of it, and I'm I'm um, I have this little I guess it's a blog called uh-huh. Lively Licks Profiles of Dogs and Their People, and um, I'm profiling friends and and also people, interesting people who happen to be dog owners. What did he talk about on the blog? I, I asked them a series of questions. First of all, why, you know, when did you become a dog lover? Why dogs? Um, did you ever rescue a dog? Uh, kind of personal dog questions. And then I do silly things like if your dog wrote an autobiography, what would be the title? And if it, <laughs> if it played a musical instrument, what would it be? And if it drove a car and if it was a famous person, who would it be? And it's hilarious what people come back with because, of course, everybody has an opinion about what their dog would do. Of course. <laughs> and a few of those are, are celebrities that are joining you for that blog? Yes. Um, well, Ted Danson and his wonderful wife, Mary, oh. they have three fantastic dogs. And they're one of my my first profiles. Um, Deborah Messing, who's married to one of our wonderful writers, Dan Zellman. They have a coton that they adore, and uh, so they've got gotten onto it. Um, Sam Waterston, who's a friend from way back, people will you know of course know from Law and Order. So I guess I'm just starting with my friends who happen to have dogs. Uh-huh. <laughs> and everybody loves to talk about their animals. Huh? They do, but also one of my early profiles is um, a guy called Steve Linos, who's with the New York Bomb Squad, and uh, he he has a two-year-old lab called Duke, uh, who's a explosive sniffing dog, and it's kind of a great story because um, I've asked everybody to to identify a charity and then uh, ten items from our catalog. So if anybody through their profile buys an item, a percentage of that will go to the charity of their choice. And my choice is called Puppy Behind Bars. Puppy Ooh. Behind Bars. I've never heard of that. What, is, what organization is it's that? It's a what fantastic is... organization that uh, uses model prisoners in, um, in prisons um, to socialize puppies that they then feed into... Uh, dogs for seeing eye work, assistance, or explosive sniffing dogs. And it's a fantastic program because the humans get so much out of it and um, feel like they're able in some way to give back positively. Um, And the dogs, of course, bring this incredible presence into places that can be extremely bleak. Mm -hmm. And um, then they go on, the dogs go on to do, to save lives. And and Duke is out of the Puppies Behind Bars program. Mm-hmm. He's a wonderful dog that that's, uh, works with uh, with Steve. Saving humans and puppies. A good organization. Now, if Bill and Jake were celebs, <laughs> who would they be? Well, Jakey would be the Dalai Lama. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy would be Barney Fife. <laughs> <laughs> we have one of those in the studio, too. <laughs> So it's fetchdog.com. I understand the site is just launching. The site is uh, it's just coming out. It's not officially launched yet. It it's, will be within days or minutes, and um, it's going to be very exciting when it launches. So I hope people will remember and will log on and, and check it out. And, of course, on FX. By the way, I think FX is doing a wonderful job. I really enjoyed the riches. Now, of course, damages. What can we look for? Anything you can tell us about? In damages? Yes. I would never give away the story. <laughs> I love are it. You, are you watching? I'm, I'm, I'm TiVoing it. Oh, good, because it's late. It is late for me. I know. It's late for a lot of people, so I think a lot of heavy TiVoing is going on. So do you have any new movies coming out or anything we should look for in the theaters? I don't. I've been, uh, I've been pretty involved with damages. And, uh-huh. uh, you know, when you kind of commit to this, even though it doesn't take up a whole year, this is our first year. And we're still waiting to hear if we're going to be picked up. And if if we're picked up, when we'll be filming again. And you kind of, everything else is kind of hanging in limbo until all that is uh, worked out. Uh Very fun. It sounds like you're enjoying your work. and Staying in touch with the animals. Check out FetchDog.com to see Glenn Close's uh, celebrity. Do we call it Celebrity Blog? No, I don't like the word celebrity. (laughs) I I (laughs) would say it's not No, it's just a a, a blog. And I, I think, I mean... As life has, you know, given me wonderful friends, a lot of them happen to be high profile, 
And so I just, I'm going to them, but I, I want to branch out into all kinds of, I mean, Steve Linos is one, you know, to, to learn about Duke and his work and, and the work of, 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 of people like him. I'm, Steve got a Medal of Valor during 9-11 and, mm-hmm. and five units of, of uh, canine units went in and, and uh, three of them didn't all come out so they wow. they suffered heavy losses and he's mm-hmm. uh, quite an extraordinary guy and you know as you know has has developed this extraordinary bond with this with this dog and they they work the you know like the big yankee stadium and the u.s open and any mm-hmm. any big uh gatherings there there you there you'll find them so so we can tell people to check out Glenn Close's Lively Licks. Lively, Lively Licks. Lively Licks. <laughs> That's yes. right. Uh, before we go, uh, quickly, Kyle Laurent, he's a nine-year-old out of New York City. Last year he raised $20,000 selling lemonade. $20,000 selling lemonade? It must have been really good lemonade. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Or how much did he charge per glass? I don't know. Uh, well, I understand some of his uh, customers include, like, Donald Trump. So, ah, uh, I see. Uh, who knows? He actually did that over the whole summer, and he took this money and he gave it to Canine Companions for Independence. Uh, this year, his activity is just about wrapping up. He has an eBay charity auction where he has uh, collars that he's sending out to get signed and returned, and he auctions them off for Canine Companions for Independence. Can we send you a collar? Absolutely. There you go. Exciting. Check Absolutely. Out. You'll actually probably be the finale collar uh, for this. We see. We just found out today that Dean Koontz's collar is at three hundred dollars. So those uh-huh. of you that want to bid on it, head on over. Of course, there's a link right from the front of AnimalRadio.com. Glenn Close, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's lovely to talk to you. Still to come from NBC's Days of Our Lives, Brian Detillo. Of course, he's had that gig for 15 years. I'm going to find out what his secret is. Also, what's up with Ellen DeGeneres? It's all on the way right here on Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at AnimalRadio.com. Log on. Learn more. (laughs) Hi, this is Wendy Malik on Animal Radio. And do not forget, stay in neuter. Animal Radio is brought to you by the American Anti-Vivisection Society. Stop the FDA from allowing milk and meat from cloned animals to be sold in grocery stores. Contact the American Anti-Vivisection Society for information at www.endanimalcloning.org. Did you know that dogs can get worm infections just from eating grass and that those same parasites can also infect humans? Ew! Thank goodness there's a safe and easy way to eliminate and prevent the major worms that infect dogs. Safeguard K90 Wormer. Just sprinkle it on your dog's food twice a year. And that's it? Yep. For more information, visit www.safe-guard.com. That's S-A-F-E-G-U-A-R-D.com. It's the best way I know to protect my dog and my family against intestinal worm infections. Animal Radio is brought to you by Get Serious, a stain and pheromone remover so easy to use, even men can do it. Hey, hey, wait a minute. (laughs) Don't take any more excuses, women. It's time to get serious. Get Serious is available at PetSmart and online at GetSeriousProducts.com. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe, this is Animal Radio. Today's show, uh, we want to thank Glenn Close for joining us, also Dr. Marty Becker. We're not done yet. Brian DeTillo, uh, you may know him if you, if you watch your stories during the day on NBC's Days of Our Lives. He's been Lucas Roberts for almost 15 years. Wow. He's joining us today. Hi, Brian. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Did we catch you at work? I am at work. I don't really know anybody who's held a gig in acting for 15 years. What is your secret? <laughs> you have to go through many comas. You have to shoot people. Wow. Uh, you see a lot of things. It's it's a great gig. I mean, it's it's a blessing to have a job in acting that long. How old were you, do you mind me asking, when you started? This, I was days, 21. 21 when 21. you started Days of Our Lives. 1993. Wow. <laughs> yes. Well, congratulations on that. Do you do you feel like one of the veterans there? Are there others that have been there the same length of time? Yeah, there are people who've been here longer than me. They're original cast members from 65. Wow. That's yeah. when it started, huh? We're kind of rebounding as a show. We're going through a lot of new management and stuff, but we're, we're getting our ratings back up and keeping people tune into the family value things. I actually got my first dog in 93 when I got Days. Oh, really? Yeah, Vinny, my lab. Hey, Vinny. Yeah, the Vincenzo Mi Amor. <laughs> Mi Amore. <laughs> and he just passed away. We put him down because he was 15 and a half, 
and it was horrible. His back legs gave out, and Aww. I'm looking at all my shrine that I have. I have his collar and his walking leash hanging in my dressing room, and pictures of him everywhere. Aww. And it's the first time I've experienced a loss with a pet, and and really a loss close to me. And that dog taught me so much, and I learned so much from him that he was such a blessing in my life. And you know, when I think I'm having a bad day, I just kind of close my eyes and talk to him. So it's really it's a blessing to have pets and to have dogs. I've two more labs at home, Dante and Sal. It's an Italian household. It is. It sounds like it there. Yes. And, and Vinny was just a, he was blind in one eye his whole life and I never knew it. Really? And, um, boy, that dog could do anything I told him. Uh-huh. So, I, just to have a relationship with, ooh, I'm being paged on the PA system. Oh, tell him to hold on. Tell him you're I'm on, on the animal. radio. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the, the loss of a, a pet can be, like, worse than losing a, a relative. When you wake up with that, and I call him person, when you wake up with that person every morning and you go to bed with him every night, and no matter what kind of day you've had, that dog is looking at you like, oh, man, I've been waiting for you all day to get home. You know, give me a kiss. Let's snuggle. Let's play with a ball. Let's do something. It's truly one of the godsends in life is to have a relationship with a pet like that. And yeah, no spouse does that. No, no spouse does that. No, no. One, no spouse goes and chases a tennis ball when I throw it. <laughs> Gives you that unconditional love. Yeah, I mean, he was just, just such a sweet dog and seemed to understand my moods and be connected to me emotionally. Did you take Vinny or did you take any of the dogs down to the set at all? Yeah, Vinny was actually on a couple TV shows, a couple morning shows. Really? Had yeah. a SAG card, probably, huh? He was a star. That's why he had a little star around his collar. Now, I know you're short on time, so here I, I want to get to the meat of this here. Okay. Of course, we're broadcasting live October 28th, the race for the rescues. I can do the kid run, which is 1K, I believe. <laughs> I don't know if I could do the 5K, but you're running, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to run. I don't know how far I'll get, but I'll run as far <laughs> as I can go. Until you just pass out, right? That's right. Well, I'm used to walking two big dogs, so I can't handle it. Will you bring them with you? I will. Dante and Sal will be there. Look for an 80-pound white lab and a 100-pound black mix that I say. Dragging a guy along. That's right. <laughs> the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Registration opens at 7 a.m. The race starts at 8.30 a.m. Judy, are you going to get involved in this? I'll watch. You'll hand me water. I'm going to let you get back to work. All righty. Brian, thanks for joining us today on Animal Radio. Oh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's a great cause. Take care. We'll talk to you later. All right, take care. You may have heard about this in the news this week. Ellen DeGeneres got on her show, one of the top talk shows in history. She got on her show and she told a very dramatic story about how she adopted a dog and then she decided she didn't want it, didn't fit into the family, and she gave it to her hairstylist family where the child got very enamored to the dog. But today is a hard day for me. Today is bad. I thought somebody had died. And I am not capable of coming out and pretending to be funny and on when things are going so terribly wrong right now. Ellen, unable to do her show, and, uh, you know, that is show business, Ellen. This is what you get paid the big bucks for. That aside, Ellen didn't know she was breaking a contract with the adoption agency that she adopted the dog from uh, in the contract. And this is standard, by the way, for most adoption agencies. Mm -hmm. If the animal doesn't work out, you give it back to the agency and they Correct. try to rehome it. You exactly. can't, can't give it away. The agency caught wind of this and they threatened Ellen. They wanted the dog back. If Ellen didn't give the dog back, the agency would go to the media and the police. She said, if I don't get the dog back by 2 o'clock, I'm calling the media on you. I'm calling my attorneys. I'm calling the police. And that's exactly what happened. The police came and they took the dog. The next day, Ellen goes on her show and tells the story. And because I did it wrong, those people went and took that dog out of their home and took it away from those kids. And I feel totally responsible for it. And I'm so sorry. And I'm begging them to give that dog back to that family. Now, the unfortunate thing is the agency doesn't have a TV show, and Ellen doesn't realize how powerful she is. That very dramatic on-air plea spurred thousands of emails, enough that the agency had to close down their Pet Finder website. And they actually received death threats as well. So here we have an agency that's uh, probably working on a shoestring budget, adopting animals, taking animals in and finding homes for them, now shut down. And, of course, this affects all the animals that are there. Ellen shouldn't have gotten on her show. This is uh, dirty laundry she should have worked out in private. Exactly. That's just a blatant abuse of her power.
And for someone who proclaims they love animals so much. She has done more harm than good. We want to know what you think here. We know there's a lot of Ellen sympathizers. And let me tell you, we always turn on the TV religiously here at the Animal Radio Studios to watch her show. This, of course, has changed my opinion. 1-866-405-8405. We want to hear what you think. If the phones are busy, go ahead, call all week long. The phones are open. Or you can email us at yourvoice at animalradio.com. Hi, Animal Radio. Who's this? Hey, this is Mike. Mike from Bakersfield, California. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hi. Doing really good. What do you think about Ellen? I caught the little clip about the dog thing. Thought it was a little sorry that she decided to use airtime for that. There's a lot worse problems going on in the world. There's people that don't have a whole lot. Look at it, what, we got over 100,000 troops in Iraq. She's going to go on national television, tell everybody, you know, I'm upset over a dog and I can't uh, come out and do my show. Yeah, maybe she should have taken a sick day off. Thanks for calling, Mike. 1-866-405-8405. We got to go. But you can call in with your comments all week long or email them to yourvoiceatanimalradio.com. And remember, there's lots more Animal Radio streaming online at animalradio.com and on your cell phone. Simply text ANIMAL to 27627. And remember, if you get a pet, please spay or neuter. If it happens to be a cat, don't declaw. And always adopt from your local shelter. I'm Judy Francis. I'm Hal Abrams. We'll see you next week right here for more Animal Radio on this fine station. Bye-bye. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe, this is Animal Radio. And welcome to Hour 2 of Animal Radio. This is... uh... This is the kickback hour. I like hour two. <laughs> it's like all of our friends have stayed late at the party and we're just sitting around and casually talking. Also, of course, hour two means lots of giveaways. Uh, Susan Sims with Fido Friendly Travel Talk. Try saying that three times fast. She'll be <laughs> joining us and she has giveaways for you, you lucky listener. one 405 8405 Those are numbers uh, to win, to ask questions, comments on Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, the phones are still ringing white hot there. We'll go back to them in just a few minutes. Also, what has the pet food crisis meant to big business? You know, there's been lots of layoffs, Judy. That's still lingering, huh? Still lingering, wow. and it will for quite some time. All the details on the way with that. Special guest author Ken Foster joins us. Animal communicator Joy Turner. If you want to talk to your pet, one 405 8405 and we'll get you in queue for Joy Turner. Also, good news about Maggie, the uh, elephant in Anchorage. Oh, what's happening? Three weeks she should be in California. Are you kidding? That's fantastic. Very good. Uh, let's go to the phones. Hi, who's this? Hello. Hi. Yes, I wonder if you could tell me, do you know if it is, have, has it been made a, a law now? If it's against the law to abandon your animals, for example, when people leave their apartments, they abandon their, leave, leave behind their cats or their dogs. Well, there's the Animal Welfare Act, which uh, is not actually new, but it is, uh, you can read about it and go to Google and Google the Animal Welfare Act. It is a national law and it is illegal to do that. It is illegal. It is illegal. Why? What's going on? Well, I live in an apartment complex. I'm a senior. And... Uh, it's happened everywhere I live in apartments. People move and they live mainly their cats behind. Mm -hmm. And presently, I got involved feeding these two kittens that are about six, five or six months old. And I was doing it secretly, but with the intention of, of getting them to uh, get to know me and have confidence in me sure. so that I could eventually maybe approach them and mm -hmm. maybe pick them up to take them down to the Humane Society. Yeah. And I have not been successful yet, but during the meantime, uh, one of the neighbors accidentally told the office on me, and now I've got the office. They sent me a warning notice. Uh oh Yeah, so, uh, and the warning notice says at the end that this could, could cause uh, a termination yeah, of your sure. residency. Mm. And tomorrow I'm going to... Um, talk with the manager and see if uh, if she can help me with this. Well, how do you suggest I approach this with her? I'm going to talk with her tomorrow. I'm really, I'm really upset about it. And But I just can't stop feeding these kittens. I, you know? I, I know how you feel. Now, there's a no pet policy where you live? No pet policy, so, except that they, when I moved in, it did say... Now, I have my cats are indoor cats. Uh-huh. 
they don't go out. And these cats, they go out? Uh, they were abandoned, I think, one of them, uh, the first one. That's how it started with one, by the a young woman downstairs who has a little kid. Mm -hmm. And the kid I, apparently asked for a cat because she sees my cats upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I, I imagine that she got the cat and then decided, oh, this is, I can't be bothered with the cat. And she dumped the cat. I, I know that the cat came from her apartment downstairs and it's been outside for a couple of months. And then about two months ago, another uh, kitten about the same age was either dropped off by her because... They probably thought I was feeding. They saw that the cat was getting fed. Mm -hmm. It was there, a Siamese tabby cat. So there are the two of them out there now. And I feed them quietly, secretly at night. But then, like I said, the neighbor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. accidentally, I call it accidentally, spilled the beans on me. Otherwise, nobody would never have known. Well, if you can't get them into your apartment and uh, do that with the manager's permission, I, I don't I don't know what to suggest. I would call the local shelter and tell yeah. them about these animals. There's really nothing the law can do. You're not going to make anybody who doesn't want their animal to even treat their animal nice. So it's... Uh, it's sort of one of those situations. You'll have to either work with a manager or a local shelter yeah, to get those animals. I'm going to work with her on it, but I just wanted to know uh, if that were if there is such a law, yeah, just so I can mention it during yeah. my conversation with That's her. That's neglect. It, it's neglect. It's hard to enforce, especially if the people have moved on. If you don't know where they're at, it's yeah. hard to prove that they were their cats. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if you work together with your landlord, contact your local shelter or humane society. They might be able to come out. They have humane traps. They may be able to catch I, these cats. Yeah, but they don't come out. I, I work on a volunteer basis. Mm. Every week I go to the humane society, and they don't have people to... Where are on. you at? I'm in Santa Maria, California. Santa Maria, okay. Yeah. Maybe we can try to find some resources for you in the Santa Maria area. That would be wonderful because I'm, I'm really upset about it because someone sure. told me that I could get... I could get the termination notice. Oh, well, you don't want that. No. No, you don't want but that. But at the same time, how can I just suddenly I know, stop I it? I know, I know, I know. You know how many studio cats we have? I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I we have so many. Uh, just every cute little face that comes by the studio suddenly uh, becomes a, a part of the family here. So I understand. Oh, and I'm alone in this. I have nobody to, this, to share this with me or to discuss it with me. And I've been making all kinds of phone calls, but I, I can't find any help or from anyone. And I had your number in my book because oh, I good. listened to uh, Animal Radio on Sundays. Sunday That's nights on KSMA. Is that right? KSMA. KSMA. Very right. Good. Santa Maria, right. And I saw that number just now, and I said, oh, an another number. I haven't called him. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I can I'm so desperate for help. Okay, well, we, we have a lot of resources. We know a lot of people, and Judy is very connected here, and she will... Uh, help you find some resources in the Santa Maria area that oh, might be able to help and uh, come out and take care. Did you yeah. say you have any animals now? I have my own cat. And yes. what and what kind of cat is that? I have uh, my my cat. You mean? Yes. I have um, a Siamese cat. Uh -huh. They're ten, the, the older cats, and um, a black. Um, she looks like a Persian mix. She's also ten or eleven years old. But I gave them five hundred dollars deposit for my two cats for when deposit, I yeah. Well, we're going to send some kitty toys, maybe a paw breaker or two. That's one of those catnip toys. Your way for the cats, okay? Thank you so much. I don't want you to hang up because I want you to get okay. on the phone with Judy here okay. and she can get a little bit of information. Okay, thank you. What was your name again? My, na my name's Hal. Hal? Yes. Okay, Hal. My name is Marlena. Mar Marlena? Yes. Marlena. Marlena. How pretty. Thank, thank you so you. much for listening to Animal Radio. Okay, wonderful. I enjoy it every, every Sunday. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, Fido Friendly Travel Talk on Animal Radio. I know, Susan, you have the top travel picks. We have a, we have a top hotel. I have a little bit of information about what's important for your dog. It's very important. It comes in a big red box, so stay tuned and, and listen to Fido Friendly Travel Talk on Animal Radio. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Jim Humphreys for Animal Radio. Pet owners love to spend money on their pets, no question about it. But what happens when their dog is hit by a car or the cat needs an emergency surgery? Advances in medical care for pets have made miracles possible, but it also comes with a great price. What are the options to help with these unexpected pet costs? Between the United States and Canada, pet owners will spend more than $45 billion on their four-legged family members. But a specific trauma event or a serious illness can devastate personal finances or potentially lead to heart-wrenching decisions. 
Fortunately, the availability of pet insurance, pet health savings plans, and even credit cards for pets will help some owners keep their pets around a little longer. The problem? Consumer advocates don't think this is a good plan. Pet insurance is not a brand new idea. Actually, it's been around for more than 25 years. In general, you pay the veterinarian for the services that are done and then submit a claim to the company. After deductibles are applied, the pet insurance company will send out a check based on the type of plan you have. Although you won't get 100% of your money back, it certainly will help ease the financial burden. But some consumer advocates don't agree. Consumer Reports has stated that insurance is only beneficial if something catastrophic happens to your pet. They recommend placing the premiums into a savings account instead. Veterinarians as a whole have not been overly receptive of pet insurance over the years either. Many become afraid that the managed care system might burden the process with paperwork. And some fear being disappointed by the pet insurance denial of claims. Jack Stevens, founder of Pets Best Insurance, has other thoughts. He says medical problems don't wait until you've saved enough money and then stay within the savings that you've accumulated. Jack points out also that Americans are not known to be good savers. If only a few pet owners are utilizing some sort of pet insurance or savings plan, what are the other options? Fortunately, for some pet owners, Care Credit may be the solution. Care Credit offers several flexible payment options that allow clients to make payments over several months. But like other lines of credit, interest rates can skyrocket if the balance is not paid within a specific time. The advances in veterinary medicine over the past few decades have been absolutely amazing. But there are costs associated with the life-saving skills and all that high-tech equipment. If your pet suffers a traumatic injury or has a very serious illness, make sure you understand the costs as well as the procedures. Talk with your veterinarian about the options that are available to you to pay the bill. And be proactive in planning for your pet's health care. For the Veterinary News Network at MyVNN.com, I'm Dr. Jim Humphreys reporting for Animal Radio. This is an Animal Radio News Update made possible by the Simple Solution Natural line of 100% biodegradable pet care products. Pet food makers, they're paying a stiff price. I'm Hal Abrams. Menu Foods, disseminating its workforce and raising the estimated cost of its tainted pet food recall by $10 million as it struggles to recover from the scandal that arose from the deaths of a number of pets, as you remember. Menu Foods, the largest maker of wet cat and dog food in North America, plans to cut 10 to 15% of its 900-plus employees. As you may remember, the problem was traced to wheat gluten contaminated with melamine. That's a cold derivative used in making plastics, and it came from a Chinese supplier. The number of animals affected, still unclear, but the trust says it faces more than 100 class action lawsuits. It's also suffered the exodus of customers from its name brand private label products, notably Procter & Gamble, makers of Imes, which is said to account for more than one-fifth of its sales. Analysts also say that sales are unlikely to normalize before mid-2008. And the chief executive, he's reduced his compensation by 22%. Other senior executives and board members will take pay cuts of 17 to 20%. Get more on this story in late breaking news at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update, brought to you by the Simple Solution Natural line of 100% biodegradable pet care products. Get more at AnimalRadio.com. Earth conscious consumers have an eco friendly choice in pet care. The Simple Solution Natural line of 100% all natural pet products, 100% biodegradable training pads, biodegradable even by California standards. They'll biodegrade faster than an orange peel. Also, Simple Solution Natural Pet Stain and Odor Remover, a great alternative to harsh chemicals found in traditional household cleaners. Simple Solution Natural, based on a way of life. Find Simple Solution at Petco, PetSmart, or your local pet retailer. Hey, cat lovers, wish you never had to touch, smell, scoop, or buy cat litter again. Your wish is granted with Cat Genie. The world's only self-flushing, self-washing cat box. The Cat Genie looks like a cat toilet and cleans like magic. See it in action at 60catgenie.com. That's the number 60catgenie.com. Or call 1-800-517-5673. 
1-800-517-4289. That's 1-800-517-4289. Cat Genie is totally litter-free. Okay, cats need to dig and cover. So Cat Genie uses permanent washable granules that never need changing. To cats, Cat Genie fills and acts like a clean litter box. See it in action at 60catgenie.com. That's the number 60catgenie.com. Or call 1-800-517-4289. That's 1-800-517-4289. Did you see the paper? They mentioned cloning animals for food. Seriously? I thought cloning was still pretty experimental. It is. Most of the animals die or are born with some sort of health defect. So why is the FDA going to approve it? I don't know. It's upsetting that the FDA seems to be ignoring scientific evidence that animals in cloning suffer. And the FDA says that it won't even label cloned foods. That's outrageous. Yeah, and we could be eating meat or drinking milk from cloned animals and not even know it. Is there anything we can do to stop this? You can. Contact the American Anti-Vivisection Society at www.endanimalcloning.org to learn more about the problems with animal cloning and to help keep cloned food off grocery store shelves. Cloning animals for food is not just about food safety. Animal suffering and other ethical issues have been ignored for too long and must be considered. To learn more, visit www.endanimalcloning.org. Just because we can clone animals for food doesn't mean we should. Every once in a while, there comes along a special group of animal lovers that stands strongly in defense of the voiceless. Animal People is that newspaper for people who really care about the animals. Animal People is published 10 times yearly. The publisher is a nonprofit corporation dedicated to exposing the existence of cruelty to animals and to informing and educating you so that animal lovers worldwide can eliminate such cruelty. Your subscription is $24 a year and is 100% tax deductible. Get Animal People's fair and accurate investigative reporting from the industry watchdog. Visit our website at www.animalpeoplenews.org. That's www.animalpeoplenews.org to subscribe to the news for people who care about animals. Animal People. Subscribe today at www.animalpeoplenews.org. Did you know that dogs can get worm infections just by eating grass and that those same parasites can also infect humans? Protect your dog and your family by deworming your dog twice a year with Safeguard Canine Dewormer. For more information, visit www.safe-guard.com. That's S-A-F-E-G-U-A-R-D.com. Fido Friendly Magazine. Perhaps you can do without it, but for kibble's sake, think of your dog. At last, a voice for us traveling canines. Until now, few have taken mobile pooches seriously. After all, who appreciates warm shelter and a comfy bed more than a dog? Fido Friendly, the travel magazine for you and your dog. A quarterly guide to Fido Friendly accommodations in the United States and Canada. Because if Fido ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Subscribe at FidoFriendly.com. Your dog will thank you. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe. This is Animal Radio. We're moments away from Joy Turner, animal communicator extraordinaire. If you want to talk to your pet, 1-866-405-8405. Ken Foster, you know, he's no stranger to Animal Radio, and I believe he's on line two. Hi, Ken. Hey. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Very good. I guess, are we calling you in Orleans? Yes, you are. Now, New Orleans. I wanted I wanted to preface you purchased a home in the uh, what is it the ninth ward lower ninth ward in New Orleans after the flood. Yeah, I just put, I just bought it this summer. In fact, why'd you do that? Well, because I was tired of renting. I was renting a house for a long time and um, and knew I was going to have to leave because it was too small and I wanted a yard for my dogs and other normal things. And I um, found a great house in. A great neighborhood that is just now being rebuilt for reasons that I won't go into right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm the first person back on the block. But wow. my neighbors are going to be here in about two weeks. They're working steadily on their house next door. Um, and I'm really excited to be here. Which, I mean, I, I'm surprised myself considering the history of what happened during the storm here. Um, but, but I feel very much at home. So, And I'm sure the house was affordable? It was affordable, which is a rare thing in New Orleans these days, because everything is uh, extremely, extremely expensive. Hmm. So, um, yes, yeah, so I've got a 
hundred-year-old house with a nice big yard, and my dogs are free to run like maniacs. <laughs> right, they love it. <laughs> yeah. The new book, Dogs I've Met and the People They Found, you've chronicled a bunch of stories, a collection of, uh, I'll tell you the ones that stuck out in my mind. Roxy, uh, a three-legged pit bull, and of course pit bulls are so much in the news right now, and I wanted to get your, your feeling on that. But Roxy apparently adopted a runt piglet. Yes, yeah, she did. She Well, she had her, her mother, her human mother, brought home a runt piglet that was going to be allowed to basically just die off on the farm. Mm-hmm. And Roxy took it under her paw, I guess, <laughs> and basically raised this hog. He became, you know, 7, 800 pounds, I guess. Wow. And he would sit and beg for treats, and he still wanted to play with his pit bull mother, but she was a little frightened when he would come charging across the yard <laughs> at her. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it was an amazing story. Somebody told me, a lot of these stories came to me when I was touring with the last book, and, and I was in a public library in Pinckney, Michigan, and walked in, and there, were, there was a pit bull sitting there waiting for me. Um, and I was hesitant to assume that it was waiting for me, but I thought, why else would this pit bull be here in the library? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And that's where that story came from. It was um, it was the younger, the subsequent second pit bull that lived with the pig who was visiting me in the library that day. Now, is this pig terribly confused? Does it think it's a dog? <laughs> Apparently, he was a little confused, and he um, he also befriended many other animals, so eventually he had to move into a pen outside, of course, and, and they would go out and he'd be sitting with um, all kinds of different animals that somehow had managed to climb into his pen and befriend him. <laughs> you, you mentioned that when you travel, you, you're able to get stories, and one of the stories that you uh, write about the newest book is comes from Costa Rica, where a local woman has what would be considered hoarding here in the United States. I don't know. Well, and it was, I mean, considered a little bit of a hoarding situation there, too, mostly because the neighbors were complaining about the barking. 55 dogs. Yeah, and she had a lot. I mean, she had a big property, but she also let them in the house. And when I went to visit her, first of all, she there was a language barrier because she was French living in Costa Rica, and I'm English and speak other languages very poorly. <laughs> so she had told me, um, I think she told me that she had 18 dogs. And then when I went to visit her, it was clear that there were many, many more than that. And she said that she thought there were 55. She doesn't even know, huh? Um, yeah, and they were running all over the place, running up to greet me, jumping on me. I came back completely covered with paw prints from head to toe. <laughs> <laughs> and she uses uh, the waste, doesn't she? Yeah, she uses their waste, is the nice terminology for it, uh, for um, to make methane gas that then is pumped into her stove where she cooks their food. Wow. Your new book, Dogs I've Met and the People They Found, not only examines the stories of these animals, but the people who are absolutely wonderful, angels themselves. One of them comes out of Texas, whose owners, I guess they adopted him from a shelter and then found out that Max, a small little puppy, suffered from hemophilia. Yeah, which, again, is one of those things. Did I know that dogs could have hemophilia? Um, You know, you never hear about it because most people wouldn't keep the dog. No. Um... But they decided to keep the dog, and it required transfusions, like $7,000 a year in transfusions. But it also uh, taught them about the disease, which they had not really been aware of themselves. And they became involved in a local hemophilia fundraiser. And Turns out to be a great story. Yeah. Now, you're a pit bull enthusiast, so I'm sure the news of late has been disturbing. Yeah, it has, except that if you're a pit bull enthusiast or if you own pit bulls or if you work in any shelter, you know that dog fighting and things like that have been going on for a really, really long time. And the one thing with the case this summer with the dog fighting incident, uh, the one thing that was sort of the silver lining, if there can be one in a situation like that, is that the media was covering it and covering the fact that there were, there were human beings responsible for what these dogs were doing, um, who were being irresponsible, in fact, in that case. Um, you know, that it wasn't that the dogs weren't inspiring this themselves, that it was mm-hmm. being put on them. Um, but the pit bull problem, uh, and it's a great breed with a great, great history that a lot of people aren't familiar with, um, but the problem also is that increasingly there are other incidents um, reported in the news. In some cases, they're completely inaccurate reports as well, where the dogs you know, aren't responsible or they aren't pit bulls, and yet they continue to be demonized in a way that is making it 
in some cities impossible for anyone, any responsible dog owner, to own any dog that looks like it might be a pit bull, uh, which I don't think is a way of addressing the problem of irresponsible dog owners. Ken Foster, the new book, Dogs I've Met and the People They Found. I have 10 copies for you right now at 1-866-405-8405. Otherwise, you can get this book anywhere, Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, uh, your local bookstore. If they don't have it, then uh, you're shopping at the wrong bookstore. Dogs <laughs> I've Met and the People They Found. Ken, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Victoria Jackson, and you're listening to Animal Radio. Hi, this is Jamie Farr, and you're listening to the Animal Radio Network. And remember to spay and neuter your pets. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe, this is Animal Radio. Just moments away from Joy Turner. She's going to talk to your pet, 1-866-405-8405. With your permission, she's going to talk to your pet. Also, coming up in just a couple of minutes, something big, something red, and you should have it for your pet. We're going to give one away. That's all on the way. Well, hi, Joy. Hello, Hal. How are you doing today? Doing well. Very, but well, I guess very well is very, uh, sort of a combination of the two words there. Uh, The words are all there. You put them in the right order. Joy, it's uh, almost Halloween. Are you going to take your animals out trick-or-treating? Well, no. (laughs) Don't like to do that. That's the long and the short. No, actually, we live on 10 acres, and we're kind of on the back of the property, so... We don't even get any trick-or-treaters. I've lived here for almost 20 years, and there's not ever been one kid that's come up our driveway. Mm, What about uh, the whole costume thing? Do pets uh, generally like to have clothes put on them? It really depends on the animal kid, and sometimes it depends on the costume. I was walking by one Halloween event, a dog that had a little devil horn thing on his head. Uh Uh-huh. And he knew, of course, that I could talk to him. And he said, would you please tell my mother I don't want to be a devil. I want to be an angel. You said the dog knew that uh, you could talk to him. What, yes. What, what is it that uh, gives that off? What kind of radar do they have? There's actually a different energetic structure that people who can communicate with animals have. And so when the animals feel it, instead of feeling like they're coming up to a door... The door is open. Mm. Mm. Okay. Let's go to the phones. Hi, who do we have on the phones with us? Hi, this is Jean. Hi, Jean. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Where are you calling from? Seattle. Seattle? Well, you are on with animal communicator extraordinaire Joy Turner. Please go ahead. Joy, I was just wondering. I have a Himalayan kitty that's about 14 years old, and she's kind of sick, and I'm just wondering how she's doing. And can you tell me her name? Her name is Jazzy. Jazzy? Is that J-A-Z-Z-Y? Yes. Okay. She says to me that she knows her body is... She'll say... She's trying to find the word she wants to use. We would say failing. But she wants to say it some other way that she can't quite put her finger on. And she wants to know why you think it's sick. Hmm. Well, because the doctor said that she has intestinal disease, so I I know she's sick and she's not eating. Okay. She says to her that doesn't make her sick. Hmm. To her that means that her body is having an issue functioning appropriately. Okay, that makes sense. But that isn't a sickness to her. A sickness is the way she perceives sickness. It would be some kind of a spiritual or Um, mental, emotional thing that isn't correct. And for her, the body is just doing what bodies kind of do normally. Does that make sense? A little bit. I'm kind of thinking that maybe the body's just kind of shutting down. She thinks that it's... She says she thinks she's a little too young for this, but she thinks that her body is kind of wearing out a little prematurely. Hmm, because she's 14. Well, she's thinking that 10 more years would be old. Oh, well, that's good. So she wants to know if there's something that can be done, according to the doctor. Okay, I'm giving her steroids, so she's getting medicine. Um, she said, sure. but is that supposed to fix it or just help it? It's just supposed to help it. It's supposed to maintain it so she feels better. It just kind of gets her through. But they said that's probably the best they could do. Okay, because she tells me that she doesn't really have any appetite, everything 
kind of taste the same. And you may want to talk to your vet about this. When I asked her to show me what things tasted like, I taste metallic in my mouth. Okay. And I, usually with some doctors, that means something to them. I don't know what, but it could mean something to your doctor that her taste, she has a metallic taste in her mouth. Okay. And that's why she's not really interested in food because nothing really gets through that taste in her mouth. It all tastes like that metallic. Okay. Well, that's helpful. Okay. Is she in pain? She's not showing me any pain. Okay. That's, that, she doesn't seem like she is, but, you know, it's hard to say. Thank you for calling. Please give Jazzy a big old hug, all her prayers. Good, I, thank you. I know that uh, prednisone and the steroids seem to be a miracle drug of one of our studio cats on it right now. That's what she has. And going through very similar things. So we know what uh, a trying experience that can be. Joy, if someone wants to talk to you during the week, how can they do that? They can do that either by calling 425-867-1779 or going through my website, which they can access two ways either talkwithyouranimals.com or joyturner.com. And, of course, you can get your joy fix uh, simply by going online to animalradio.com. Every day, there's an hour of Joy Turner. 1-866-405-8405 if you want to talk to Joy next week right here on Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at animalradio.com. Log on. Learn more. Hi, this is Nancy Cartwright, the voice of Bart Simpson, and you're listening to Animal Radio. Don't have a cow, man. Hi, I'm Jay Moore, and as a sports fan, I can tell you there's nothing quite better than spending a day in the park playing catch with a beautiful lady. Like Shirley, my dog. Listen, adopt a pet. They are the most loyal companions you will ever have. Visit Pets911.com or call 1-888-PETS-911. Hooray! For more information, go to Pets911.com. Proud to be a partner of Animal Radio. Do you know what you're serving for dinner tonight? If the FDA has its way, the milk and meat you see at the grocery store could come from cloned animals. And you won't even know because it won't be labeled. Cloning animals for food involves more than just food safety. Animal suffering and other ethical issues must also be considered. The cloning process uses hundreds of animals to produce just one clone, causing death or severe health problems for most of the animals involved. Just because we can clone animals for food doesn't mean we should. Contact the American Anti-Vivisection Society to learn more about the problems with animal cloning at www.endanimalcloning.org. That's www.endanimalcloning.org. And have a voice in what you are serving for dinner tonight. Fido-friendly travel talk brought to you by The Honest Kitchen. Pet food with passion and principles. Offering people food formulated for pets. Check out their website, www.thehonestkitchen.com. Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness. From all across the globe, this is Animal Radio. Welcome back. This is Susan Sims on Fido Friendly Travel Talk. And, you know, I'm out there with my puppies, and we do a lot of traveling. And I know there's been situations where I might have a problem. The puppy picks up a splinter or there's a god-awful tick. And maybe I wasn't smart enough on this trip to have a, a pet first aid kit, but we are in luck. In fact, we have Cher Luck from Country Dog and Friends on the line, and she's going to talk to us about the importance of a pet first aid kit. Hi, Cher. Hi, Susan. Oh, it's so great to be here today. It's so nice to hear from you. Tell everybody what's in the big red box. We have a plethora of great name brand first aid items, over 60 in fact, that will just help you through every situation. For instance, our best feature, because we change seasonally, we're giving away a free tick remover because can you believe that ticks can survive through the winter? Those guys are horrible and I actually have that free tick uh, remover and it works fantastic. 
Well, that's great. That scoop really picks up the entire insect, and it also helps you retain it. So when you get to the vet, you can diagnose and see if you have any major problems. That's really cool because, you know, that's probably the hardest thing that we have. We have a, a chocolate lab, and so you can't really hardly see anything on her. You have to be petting her and combing her to feel it. And it's always been really, really difficult to get those critters. But th- that free, that tick remover that you offer is really exceptional. Well, I'm glad you're pleased. Moreover, what we have, we have a a great aluminum blanket. Now, those blankets can be used for humans as well as for your pet in case of shock. And if you're into that uh, really cold weather, you're going to need to put that blanket around you to keep you insulated really well. We also include a eye and wound wash and various bandages. But I came to this conclusion that every household needs some sort of first aid kit on hand for the family as well as for the small uh, uh, furry friends because Mm -hmm. you just never know when these little situations can arise. A little cut can turn into something that's very, very serious if you don't uh, pay attention right away. I think when we get in a hurry and we're out the door and we think we've got everything we need, we, we're not really wanting to think of, of an accident or, or what something would happen. But, uh, you know, I'll be on the road and, and we'll have to make a pit stop. And that's when everything happens. That's when, you know, your dog is out there, you know, getting into trouble or, or you know, running into a fence or doing something like that. And you could be 10, down, 10 miles down the road from the nearest pet store or drugstore even. So it's really, really important. This is like one of the most important important things that that you should take with you when you are traveling. And Country Dog and Friends, Big Red Box, I have to tell you how we came about putting something together as comprehensive as as we've done. Several years ago, when I was up vacationing in Maine during the winter, we saw from afar, what we thought at first was a struggling little uh, fox, but it turned out to be an abandoned terrier who was very badly injured in its leg, and it was losing traction in the snow because the snow was that deep. So we ran in, and we just grabbed him, and of course, we put him in the house immediately, and then we started running from one room to the next, from the bedroom to the bathroom to the kitchen, scrambling to try to find some first aid materials in a makeshift manner. And Mm -hmm. that's when it dawned upon me that all these good things should be in one location, in one centralized box, so you can just grab it and go. I also like that there is a guy in there for the dog and the cat care because there's an opportunity I may not know what to do and so you have a little guidebook in there and it's going to give you a step by step on what to do in these situations. Absolutely and it's illustrated and it's a very easy read. You see our mantra at Country Dog and Friends is choosing to be a responsible pet owner is praiseworthy but knowing how to respond in a crisis is fundamental. That's why I encourage everyone who has a box or is going to get a first aid kit for themselves, pre-read the how-to manual so you'll know how to react in the last minute notice and you won't worry about what am I going to do, how do I handle it. You'll already know it. It'll be in the back of your mind and it'll click right in. So Cher, let's go ahead and give away one of these big red boxes right now. I'm thrilled. Go right ahead. Pick up your phone and call 1-866-405-8405. You want to travel safe with Fido. And, and if you're not lucky enough to win one of these today, you be sure and go online to countrydogandfriends.com. I want to thank you again, Cher, for coming on. And thank you so much for donating these, these wonderful and really necessary uh, first aid kits for our listeners. My pleasure, Susan. Thank you for having me. Your comments about Ellen on the way. I see that Maggie the Elephant from Alaska, if you're a regular animal radio listener, you know about her. Uh She's on her way to California. The Alaska Zoo took delivery of a big old crate this morning, uh, 10,000 pounds. It has a heater specifically designed for moving elephants. And I guess they're going to, like crating a dog, they're going to get her used to the uh, big old crate. Great idea. Then close the door and move her on down to California with the help of the U.S. Air Force. And she'll end up at a beautiful sanctuary down there. She should be down there sometime within the next three weeks. They're planning on moving her. All the details, of course, at AnimalRadio.com. More Animal Radio on the way. You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at AnimalRadio.com. Log on. Learn more. Hi, it's Lisa Laporta from HGTV's Design to Sell for Animal Radio. Please stay and neuter your pet. This is Animal Radio Network. Network. 
Preventing pain, fear, and suffering of animals through nationwide education and awareness from all across the globe. This is Animal Radio. We've been asking you for the last couple of hours to give us a call, 1-866-405-8405, with your pet horror stories, with good endings preferably, or your comments on Ellen DeGeneres' meltdown. Exactly. And if you don't want to comment on air, you can call us during the week anytime, or you can email us at yourvoiceatanimalradio.com. Dot com. In fact, I have a couple of emails. I got email. Yes, I do. I got email. How about you? I'm sure you do. I don't know why I said that. I got a horror story email. Can we can we get the horror story music, Guido? Thank you. can close that. Thank you. This email comes from Amy Collins, and she is proudly serving in our armed forces in Germany. And she writes, hi, I downloaded the most recent podcast and I have a horror story of my own to tell. Bring it on, Amy. She says, I lived on the third floor of an apartment complex in Savannah, Georgia. No, no, that's not the horror story there. (laughs) Uh, She says that she had her windows open. Now, any story that starts like that. Uh, has got to be a horror story. I had been on the phone and I realized I'd not seen or heard my cat Myrtle in quite a while. I searched around the very small apartment and saw that the screen was missing from the window. I immediately rushed down a flight of stairs and started searching. I happened to look back up and I saw my standard poodle, George, hanging his head out of the open window. I ran back upstairs to close the window, then back down to continue my search. I began to walk down the street, searching under cars, calling her name. I returned to the area immediately below the window where two huge holly bushes were, and I finally heard some rustling, and Myrtle came crawling out of the bushes. Where's the stinger, Guido? Better late than never, right? (laughs) Now, she was three years old when this happened, and now she's nine. She's still crazy as ever. In fact, in my apartment, there are beams throughout the vaulted ceiling, and she climbs around on them. It's her own private jungle gym. Wow. Let's send Myrtle some paw breakers if we can, okay? Okay. Amy, thanks for your email at yourvoice at animalradio.com. Also, in regards to Ellen DeGeneres. But today is a hard day for me. Today is bad. And... I am not capable of coming out and pretending to be funny and on when things are going so terribly wrong right now. Tara of Santa Barbara writes, Hal and Judy, Ellen should get an Oscar. Tara goes on to write, Ellen versus Moms and Mutts. Of course, that was the agency that adopted the dog out. Right. Ellen versus Moms and Mutts is like a nuclear bomb to settle a fist fight. Of course, we want to hear your comments all week long. 1-866-405-8405 or your voice at AnimalRadio.com. You're listening to Animal Radio. You can learn more about today's guest at AnimalRadio.com. Log on. Learn more. Welcome to Voice of the Animal. 525,600 minutes. How do you measure a year in your life? In the Broadway musical Rent, from which the line from this song is taken, those minutes are measured in love. Does love play into how you measure the minutes of your life when it comes to animals? In the 525,600 minutes of this year, one unspayed mama kitty and her unspayed and unneutered offspring will give birth to 127 cats. This year, 13,665,600 animals in laboratories will die from having eye drops, lipstick, drain cleaner, wrinkle injections, and countless other consumer products tested on them. That is 26 animals every single minute of every single day. 17 million wild animals will be trapped this year for their fur. That means that every day, 46,575 animals including bobcats, coyotes, red and gray foxes, badgers, mink, beavers, lynx, and wolves, will die in a trap. During the four minutes you and I are talking today, 130 animals will have died a gruesome and painful death. This year, 5 million other animals will also die in those traps. The fur industry calls them trash animals. Because they are not used for their fur, they will just die in a trap and be discarded. These 5 million trash animals will include pets, dogs and cats, as well as hawks, owls, golden eagles, squirrels, blue jays, ducks, swans. 
Will the minutes of your year include buying any garment, pet toy, or trinket with fur? In the 1,440 minutes of each day, 355 million pigs are slaughtered on factory farms. These pigs will not experience 525,600 minutes because they are killed before their first birthday. And since they live their lives in cages so confined they cannot even turn around, they die, never knowing the feel of sunshine or the earth or the kind voice of a human being, and certainly not love. The same thing is true for the 38 million cows and calves that are slaughtered each year on factory farms, and the 250 million turkeys, and the 8 billion chickens. That number of chickens is so high that my calculator would not record it, so I can't tell you how many chickens are killed during this program, but it is far more than the minutes in a year. These are some of the ways some people spend their precious minutes every year, by supporting and trafficking in pain, despair, greed, and cruelty. Yet there are those who spend their minutes with great love for the animals. You can too. You can help that mama kitty by trapping, spaying, and neutering any stray cats and dogs and adopting them, or giving money and support to those who already do. So many great companies employ methods of product testing that do not use animals. Spend the dollars you earned with your minutes work and buy your eye drops, lipstick, drain cleaner, and wrinkle injections from these companies. That way, when you look in the mirror, you will reflect compassion. Be a considerate and conscious shopper. Choose not to wear fur or leather. Don't clothe yourself in a garment stitched from despair. Knowing the horror inflicted on animals in factory farms, consider becoming a vegetarian. You will look better, feel better, and as Leonardo da Vinci said, your body will not be a tomb for another creature. This year, why not use some of your precious 525,600 minutes to help the animals? Because here's what happens when you spend your minutes with kindness, compassion, and conscious consumerism. For both you and the animals, those minutes grow into a year of love. For information on how you can make a difference in the lives of animals, please visit us on the World Wide Web at voiceoftheanimal.org. For Voice of the Animal, this is Rayanne Cumulos. I want to thank Ken Foster, Marty Becker, Glenn Close, and Brian Dottillo for all joining us. Kip Adada on the way, as well as Robert Fulgham within the next couple of weeks, and we'll also be broadcasting from the Race for the Rescues. And remember, if you get a pet, please spay or neuter. And if it happens to be a cat, don't declaw. And always adopt from your local shelter. This is Animal Radio Network. Network.